that this is not happening by chance. I believe these things are happening purposely. And I think that this government is allowing these things to happen, and in many cases causing them to happen purposely according to a plan. There is something called dialectics, uh, Hegelian dialectics, we can get into later. But um, the, uh, the whole idea is to cause people to be frightened. And in order to frighten people, uh, a frightened and fearful people will do things for you. They will submit to you if they're sufficiently frightened. And so the governmental context of what I'm saying is that the government of this country wants people to be frightened. That's why, they, that's why they're continually turning criminals back out into the streets. Uh, they go in, they kill 15 people in a, in a, in a uh, McDonald's, they get a $250 fine and a three, three years in jail, which is uh, then when we find out what actually happened, they got one year and the, and the fine was uh, commuted. And so they're back on the streets, they're turning murderers back onto the streets. I'm not, there is no doubt in my mind that it is not because of loss of space or they don't have the space for the criminal. They got space for you if you don't pay your taxes. The, the, the point is, is that they, they do not want, they want as much chaos in society as possible. They, and if you, it's a very simple. Uh, the World Health Organization came out a long time ago and since then the FBI has, uh, has concluded the same thing. That the truly criminal element in America is less than a one percent of the total population of America are truly criminal element. One percent or less are the murderers, are the real serious criminals. Logic alone would tell you that if you put those people in jail or you put them to death, you don't have any more serious crime. Now what? Now you, don't have, you, you have very little need for the police department. You have very little need. The people now have more time to think about things. They don't have to worry about their children. They don't have to worry about their family. They don't have to worry about crime in the streets. Consequently, they can concentrate now on who's running this government, you know, how fair are the equitable or the laws, and so therefore, it's better to keep people occupied. We've known that for a long time. That's why science, that's why politics is called political science. There is a method to controlling people. Politics is referred to as political science. It's a science. If you can keep people organized, uh, keep people disorganized, frightened, fearful, uh, broke, that's another thing, they want to keep you financially uh, in a hole, uh, then people are subservient to you. You do not want people to become self-sufficient and have enough money that, the, that they don't have to listen to you. Uh, you, don't, you, need, you need crime, and you'll see why, and I'll show you today why you need a lot of crime, you need to let criminals back out into the streets. They talk about um, something, if you think about the logic of behind these rules and behind these new laws we have, it's absolutely insanity. You, someone, a criminal goes out, he kills somebody, what do they do? They take the gun away from the criminal and they let the criminal go free. Then they say that there's just a, a, a proliferation of crime. We can't do anything about this crime that's out of control, the drug trafficking and all the, the killings going on and the, and the gangs killing each other. Uh, but, the, but the point is that if you don't pay your income tax or if you do something that's against the government and, and, and the system of things, if you get out of line, they will find you. The federal, uh, the IRS will find you if you don't pay your income tax. You can go into the Amazon jungles and they will come down there looking for you. And if they have to spend seven million bucks, they're gonna find you and they're gonna bring you back here and make an example out of you. So if they have the power, this is the most powerful military nation in the face of the earth ever, ever devised by men. This nation is the most powerful military combine on earth. It has always been. And if you think about the time back in, what, 50 years ago in 1940, when the United States was a very, uh, infantile country. It didn't have all of the high technology it has today. And just within a few couple of short years, uh, it got its stuff together and was able to meet Adolf Hitler on the field of battle throughout the world and was able to do a battle with the whole Nazi empire. But they can't do anything about the drugs in Pacoima. The, pop, the problem is, is that they, they have total control over everything. So anytime you see things going on, uh, just understand that the powers that be in this government want it that way. Franklin Roosevelt, probably most of you don't remember who he was. He was one of the presidents. 
Franklin Roosevelt made a statement publicly that uh, I think is very important. He said that anytime you see anything happen in politics, you better understand it was planned that way. So anything that's going on in this country that you see that sounds crazy and lunacy, it's crazy and lunacy to you. But to those guys who are doing it, they know what they're doing. There is a method to the madness. I want to show you, and I think it'd be better if I just go on and, and uh, begin with the slides, because I have so many of them, and I'll just stop and comment as we're going. Um, are we going to be able to... S well, I don't know. I don't know. Let's see. Uh, is that... Is that okay? Yeah, okay. Uh, on the dollar bill, you'll see the... Um, the uh, on the back of the dollar bill, you'll see the symbol on the left-hand side of the bill which is uh, I know it coeptus, which means our enterprise is now a success, or our enterprise is crowned with success. I know it coeptus. So you say, fine, so you have an enterprise and it's now crowned with success. What enterprise are you talking about? Novas ordo seclorum. Novas is novas, meaning new. Ordo is order, and seclorum is where we get the word secular, meaning the world. So it's new order of the world, the new world order. George Bush's new world order is now a success. But the problem is this was put on the dollar bill back in 1934. 1934 is when the Federal Reserve actually finally took total control of the United States monetary system and that's when they said it is now a success because this is a symbol. This is an emblem of a secret society. A secret society of Freemasons called the Illuminati, the German Bavarian Illuminati. They were a, a secret society founded in the south of, in the south of, uh, it, of uh, Germany. They were called the Illuminati, the illuminated ones, the enlightened ones. They uh, began to, they connected themselves to another group of, of uh, Freemasons in France, in the south of France, referred to as the uh, Pierre de Sion, French Grand Orient Temple Masons. And so this symbol today while it's on the, on the back of a $1 bill, it is also incidentally on a document in the British Museum and in the Louvre Museum. Both have some of the original writings of that sect of Freemasons in Germany that are today on display. And on one of the documents, it has that exact symbol, Anuit Coeptus Novus Odoseclorum, and that was in 17... Uh, 74 that the Bavarian Illuminati drew up their plans for what they were going to do in America and how they were going to do it and that's so that's not a new that's not just from 1934 that goes all the way back to 1774 1775 it's a symbol of a secret society the uh, triangle at the top with the light emanating from around it is Horus the god of the ancient Egyptians, of course, this is an Egyptian pyramid. You don't find pyramids in America. You find them in Egypt. And that pyramid is the, is, uh, the symbol of the eye was in the Egyptian religion, Horus, which was the newborn sun. Every morning when the sun came up, his name was Horus. There was, um, that was the solar divinity in Egypt. Horus was God's son, the light of the world, who is risen. He is our risen savior, our risen and so Horus was referred to as God's sun, and that's why the light is emanating from around, because it's the sun. The sun is a round eyeball of God, the ancient Egyptians believed. The pupil of God was, God, was the sun, and he's watching you. And therefore, the sun was, was very bright, and so today we even say someone who is extremely intelligent is brilliant. They're bright. And that's why God is, of course, the most brilliant of all. Therefore, the sun is the most brilliant because it's God's eye. All right, anyway, there are 13 layers on the pyramid. And the 1776 at the bottom is uh, 1776. A lot of people think it's because of the country being founded in 1776. It has nothing to do with that. As I said, this is on a, doc a document published back in 1774, 75, and then in 1776, the Roman numerals were, uh, appeared on it in Europe. So what it amounted to is that the 1776 was when this secret society actually formed itself into a secret society and put itself into operation. Like any other secret society or fraternal order, there's a few years in the formative stages. And then there's a time when they actually get a charter and come together and actually become an actual organization. 
and then they get a charter from the government and they actually are a legal organization. They were in operation in the 1760s, 1770s, but it wasn't until 1776 that they actually uh, made themselves into a coherent order, and it was called the Order and Sec of the Illuminati. Um, they were the basis for what we call today in our country the Bavarian um, Illuminati was the basis for what we call today the Colombian faction. The Colombian faction of the Illuminati came here right after this government was formed, and that's where we get today Columbia, Columbia, uh, this Columbia Space Shuttle, Columbia Movies, Columbia Television, you know, Columbia Records, everything, Columbia University. Uh, as a matter of fact, Columbia TV, Columbia Broadcasting System, CBS. What is the symbol for CBS? It's the all-seeing eye of CBS. It's the Colombian faction of a secret society that calls themselves the Colombians, and that's why our government is in the District of Columbia, because these guys own our government. They print our money, and they own not only the government, but they own you. You are their property. As a matter of fact, when you're born, your birth certificate, and on the bottom of the birth certificate, it says the Department of uh, Commerce. It is a property of the Department of Commerce because you are nothing more than a piece of commercial material. That's why if you're out of work, you don't go to the unemployment office. You go to the office for, uh, what is it called, human resources, because you're just a human resource. So in other words, these guys print the money, they run the country, and they own you, and they own everything around it. And so they make the laws, and that's why they can decide who can kill who, and who can get away with who, and who can get away with whatever, because they make the laws and they decide, all right? Um, the new order of the world, our enterprise is now a success. As I said to you before, there are 13 layers of this pyramid. There are 13 letters in Anacoeptus. Uh, we'll get into that, uh, all of this symbolism later. But 13 is a very important number to this secret society. There are 13 stripes. There are 13 uh, stars here which make up the Star of David. Um, the 13 berries, there are 13 leaves, 13 arrows. Uh, there are 32 feathers here and 33 feathers there. Uh, everything is done in sequence of 13 because 13 is an unlucky number. That's why you know, we say 13 is an unlucky number because the reason why we say it's unlucky is because it is a divinely inspired number. It has to do with God in the heavens and therefore it's unlucky for you and it's not supposed to be used by you. 13, of course, is based on, the, it's, this is what we call Masonic symbolism. Freemasons designed this dollar bill. Everything is done in sequence of, of 13, and again, I draw your attention to the fact that you have 13 stars here, which uh, collectively make up the Star of David. There's a reason why. Uh, here on the dollar bill, just to show you how clever these guys are and how crafty they are, the, um, on the one dollar bill at the top, you'll see this little image right here. I think I can make that. This is just a large, uh, an enlargement. This is an enlargement from a photocopy machine, so it's not really that, that clear. But if you blow it up from an actual photograph, you'll see it is a, a, it's a, it's a little owl. It's a symbol of the Bohemian Society. The Bohemian Society meets in California on the last two weeks of July of every year. The Bohemian Society is another secret society that was spun off of a, of a larger secret society. The Colombians have a, have a little fun club that they meet for two weeks out of the year in Northern California, and they're called the Bohemian Society. They meet in something called the Bohemian Grove. I have pictures, which I don't have with me tonight, but I'm going to have on my next lecture. Uh, showing all of the presidents, all of the living presidents, excluding the new one, but all of the living presidents at the Bohemian Grove in Northern California, and they're all wearing red and black um, Ku Klux Klan dress type of, uh, of regalia, like the Ku Klux Klaners, with the pointed headdress and everything. And, uh, I mean, that's quite a sight to see presidents dressed like Ku Klux Klan members, right? And they're standing in front of a big open pit of fire, and behind them is a, about a 25, 20 to 25 foot owl behind them. And the article in Elm Magazine and Time Magazine, I've got two or three different magazines showing basically the same pictures, 
It says that the presidents meet with all of the heads of industry throughout the world, all of the heads of state throughout the world, and all of the most important wheel of dealers in this country, and they all meet up in Northern California, and they have, say, they have uh, rituals where they go before the owl after midnight, and then what a picture you got with all the presidents dressed up like Ku Klux Klaners with black and red robes on before an owl. And these are your presidents of this country. And the reason why they chose the owl is because the owl is a symbol used in Europe by secret societies because the owl is wise because it sees things in the dark. And the implication is, of course, that's why they are where they are because they're very brilliant and they know things that you don't know. So they see things in the dark and they put their little owl on the dollar bill. It's just a clever little thing, but it shows you how these guys think. Uh, we get into Masonic symbolism. Uh, when you drive by a Freemasons, uh, the Masonic Lodge, you'll see the, 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 the square and the compass and then the G in the middle. The G is for not God. Everyone thinks it's for God. It's not. It's for geometry. Actually, it goes back even further than geometry. In 1717, it was for geometry. But the G has been used by secret societies as far back as ancient Greece, meaning the gen generative principle, the principle of generation or sexual principle in nature. And so uh, when you see that G, just remember it stands for geometry now. So talking about geometry, here is um, a typical geometric figure of um, a three ring square, the circle, the triangle, the square, all have, uh, all have you know, Masonic and spiritual meaning, as you'll see. But here we have the, uh, the square within the magic circle. Here's the, um, the uh, a Washington Monument from above, the square within the magic circle. Incidentally, the, the Washington Monument is the Egyptian obelisk, another, like the pyramid on the dollar bill, another Egyptian symbol, because what America is referred to America is referred to by the secret societies throughout the world as the New Egypt. That's a term that is given to them in their literature, given to America in their literature, the New Egypt, because our whole laws are based on the ancient magic of Egypt, the white and black magic. That's why your police cars have black and white cars, because it's the idea of black and white magic coming out of Egypt. And, uh, you know, these people that are running this country are really devious. But um, here we have the mystic star. I think I'm probably going to have to adjust each one. Here's um, the mystic star, to give you an example, is a seven-pointed star that's used in uh, secret societies. You'll see it all over. Seven-pointed star. Uh, here's the Masonic Orders of Fraternity. Again, you'll see it. Uh, Golden Dawn, Enochian Magic. Incidentally, uh, as I said, this whole thing is going to be like a shotgun effect. I'm covering a lot of stuff. But um, the old symbol of John Wayne in the movies, remember in the old movies when, uh, when the pilots were taking off on the aircraft carriers, you'd always see the military doing the thumbs up signal, you know, when the planes were getting ready to take off, the thumbs up. Well, that thumbs up signal was developed for America by Aleister Crowley, one of the most master magicians the world's ever known. And uh, he also developed for England, uh, for Churchill, the victory sign, the V for victory. Uh, the V for victory is from the Jewish Masonic symbol for benediction and life. You'll see that in a few minutes, too. But uh, just to show you that symbols and emblems don't just happen. They're, they're for a reason. They mean something. Again, we go back to the seven-pointed star. And uh, California Highway Patrol, wait a minute, I had, there it is. California Highway Patrol uses a seven-pointed star. It has to do with the Enochian magic. And um, it's a magical symbol. The seven, of course, is the same seven, but the reason why we have seven days of the week. Uh, the synagogues have the seven candle lamp stand, the seven raid kingdom. Everything is done in seven. Uh, it's a very important number. Um, here's a double cross which was Roman Freemasonry. The double cross, which is Eastern, uh, the Eastern, uh, uh, what do you call it, the Russian Orthodox, the Greek and the, uh, and the Eastern Orthodox Church uses the double cross. And it's appropriate because that's exactly what we're talking about here, a double cross. If we understand what, where that word came from, double cross implies that you've been deceived or been cheated or something. 
uh, it's a symbol that means something, and I'll show you how it is uh, incorporated into uh, politics. The double cross, like here, and of course on Exxon you have the double cross. And I had a letter from the Exxon Corporation asking them if that was the double cross of Eastern Freemasonry, and they said yes. That's why we did it that way. So, I mean, they don't mind telling you if you are smart enough to figure it out. They'll tell you. that You write them, and they'll be very honest with you. Um, here's uh, interesting. The, uh, the, this is probably familiar to you. The five-pointed inverted pentagram is generally the inverted pentagram is regarded as something representing evil. Uh, the five-pointed pentagram, penta, of course, being uh, five, if you, take the, if you take the arms off of a pentagram, the star, and when you have just the inside, you have what is called a pentagon. That's why the United States has a pentagon. The pentagon is a symbol. Uh, that's why, incidentally, Chrysler can use the pentagon symbol as a Chrysler symbol because they're the ones that produced all of the uh, half tracks and tanks and everything else for the United States during the Second World War for the Pentagon. So they still use the symbol of the pentagon. But what's interesting is that this is an upside down with the point pointing down, the two pointing up, and this is a symbol, of course, as I said, representing the devil, and you see a lot of these killers and rapists and murderers, uh, you know, with the five-pointed pentagram. Uh, here it is again, just showing you how it's, it has its connotation with the pointing down, being the devil. Here's the first synagogue in Los Angeles of the Benai Brit in 1873, and up here, what do you see, is the inverted pentagram. We're talking about this is the first synagogue in Los Angeles, and they're using an inverted pentagram, which everyone knows is associated from the earliest ages in the Middle Ages with devil worship, okay? Um, here's a seven-rayed kingdom of God, how the seven flames and the seven candles of light. Incidentally, the seven candle lamps stand in the synagogue. The seven candles represent the seven lights of the heavens, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, the sun, and the moon the seven ancient gods of the ancient world. So when you see the seven candle, that's a very holy seven candle lamp. No, it just represents the seven little lights in the heavens. And each one of those, uh, each one of those lights represented a god. Each one of, the, one of those gods represented a day. So therefore, we have seven days of the week to honor the seven candle lampstand of the seven ancient gods of the world. Uh, it's all very metaphysical. It's all very strange. And it's all very well put together. If you understand how it works. Uh, here's the, uh, the shell oil. Uh, to give you an idea, well, let me back it up. I moved too quick on that. Um, here's the Panorama Mall has an emblem, a symbol, and I put the shell symbol next to it so you can see what we're talking about here in shell is the sun rising between two triangles. The sun rising between, that's a sunrise, it's not a shell, just like the Toyota, you see the sun rising, and I wrote a letter to um, the Shell Oil Corpor Corporation, and I sent them pictures like this, and I had some extensive research material I sent with them and said, is this true? Is this, is this not, in fact, a shell, but it is a sunrise, which is a symbol of a secret society in Europe, and it is used in, uh, in this way? And they said, yes. They wrote back and said, yes, it is a secret society symbol. It's been used for the last hundred years. Um, Prince Bernard of the Netherlands except, uh, was a member of this secret society. And so when you drive by a shell, just remember, it's not a shell, it's a sunrise of a secret society, and I'll get into that, what it means later. And it's just to show you how emblems and symbols all around us, and we don't even know what they mean. Um, here's another one. Um, the the eight-pointed star is two squares superimposed on each other. Get it better. This is square here, and then the square is here, and it's called the double square of Freemasonry. <clears throat> the reason for the double square, the first square means that you play fair and square. You know, when you play baseball, you play baseball down to town square, and if you, uh, anything which is legitimate and, and, and right according to the secret societies is square. You play fair and square. And if you go to jail, they'll give you three square meals. It's fair. It's, it's, it's the right thing to do, right? And so the whole idea is square means that everything which is right and legal and just and everything's squared. So that's why even in court they say, well, your testimony doesn't square with the, with the facts. It's square means things which are right and correct. 
when you superimpose another square, the, impl the implications of the second square, which you will see, means disorder. It's the in intertwining of both order and disorder, meaning that you have the power over what is right and correct, and you also have the power over disorder and things which are not right and which are not correct. And so the same people control both chaos and order. Incidentally, uh, that's why you have, um, well, I better not get into that because that's going to come up in a minute. Uh, here it is again, the double square Freemasonry. Um, the chevron. Chevron oil is actually the double square Freemasonry. See, this is two squares. Oh, wait a minute. This is two squares. What this chevron is, and that's the word chevron. Uh, you'll see on the military, the police wear them on their, on their arms, and the uh, military wears the uh, insignias of power. They're called chevrons because they are squares. It's a box. See, that's a box, and this is a box, and this box is sitting on top of that box. And if you draw a line you know, for a triangle back here, you'll see it's two square boxes sitting on top of each other. It's referred to as the double square or the chevron of Freemasonry, the double square of Freemasonry. Okay? And so it implies that the powers that be in this world have both control over revolution, trouble, anarchy, and they have control over good government and over righteous government. So they can do whatever they want. You want to have a good government or a bad government? They can do the same. They can do whatever they want because they got the money and they got the power. <clears throat> Here in England, of course, it's more appropriate in England is the double square Freemasonry in in London, at the uh, Parliament. Stephen says the octagonal central library in London has the square, the double square of Freemasonry. And of course, it's, I think it's appropriate there because they do, in fact, finance and organize and direct all over the world. All kinds of bloodshed and violence all over the world is being organized, directed, and financed by the United States government and the British government together, Britain and America, or the reason for the violence and the chaos that we're seeing throughout the world today. In uh, Yugoslavia, it's all been planned. This is all part of something that the United States is doing in the Middle East right now, and Yugoslavia is going to pay for it. Um, again, we have the double square. All right. Uh, here is the double square Freemasonry war by the Queen. And uh, this square is uh, the Masonic square is referred to as the Knights of Malta square. This one is the British square, Freemasonry. The Knights of Malta, you'll see it's like two, four little triangles coming together, but they don't, they don't actually have a point in the middle. It's just a round or a nothingness in the middle. You'll see that again in Arco, where the four little points come together, but nothing in the middle. The Knights of Malta is, the square of Knights of Malta is the pyramid from the top, looking down on the pyramid of Egypt without the capstone. That's because, remember, uh, on the dollar bill, the capstone doesn't have, is, is not connected to the body of the pyramid. So here is flying over the top of the pyramid, looking down on the Great Pyramid. You don't have a point because the chief cornerstone is not on the pyramid. Actual, and I just threw this in. I don't know why, but I did. Here's under life in fascism. I wanted to make the point about political symbols. Uh, we talk, we hear a lot of people talking on radio and television about fascism and how bad the fascists are and fascism this and fascism that. Well, in most cases, fascism, fascism or fascists have come to power after the nation has suffered an economic collapse. Are we having problems economically or what? Right? A military defeat, Vietnam, and some other disaster. The fascist party wins mass support by promising to revive the economy and restore national pride. And that's exactly what the government's saying today. They need to re restore national pride. Get uh, Clinton in there to be president. And no one seems to realize Bill Clinton, as a Rhodes Scholar, trained in England, in London, England, and Oxford University, bought and paid for by the Rockefeller Foundation, financed and organized his education. He is nothing more than a yes man for the power elites in this country. They want another candidate because he looks good. Personal liberties are severely limited under a fascist government, which is what I'm saying to us, that's what we have here. And the government also controls newspapers or radio and other means of communication. That's why I'm not on nationwide television, right? And the issues, it issues propaganda to promote its policies, and boy, this government does that. Um, 
Let's see. Oh, yeah. Wait a minute. This is interesting. A secret police force crushes any resistance. I like the word crush because that's what they do. You get in their way, they come out and beat your brains out, right? So um, here is a symbol of fascism. I thought I had one. Yeah, here it is. The French fascism. This is the symbol for fascism. A bundle of sticks with a hatchet head. Here is a, uh, another. Here's another. Uh, incidentally, you always see the red shield. Uh, in England, the story of uh, Robin Hood. Robin Hood comes from Robin Hood always on the, in the movie Robin Hood, which uh, Errol Flynn played in. At the very beginning, Errol Flynn is standing behind a red shield. He's standing here and it says Robin Hood. Why? Because the red shield is, a, is German for Rothschild. The Rothschilds of England were a German-Jewish family in England who took over the Bank of England and took over five other banks in Europe and became known as the Rothschild banking dynasty of the world, the richest banking dynasty on earth, okay? Rothschild in German. Roth is red and shield is flag or, or a shield. So Rothschild is red shield. And red shield, everybody in Europe knew that the Rothschilds were the biggest murdering bunch of, uh, of uh, thieves, and thugs the world's ever known. Oh, sure, they're very wealthy and they get banks, but nonetheless, these are just high-class thugs. And so they were called hoods, and that's where we get the word hoods. They, were, went, they went around the world robbing, and that's why they're called Robin Hood. Robin Hood is the hood that was robbing people in the Sherwood Forest, and that's where the home of the Rothschilds was, in the Sherwood Forest, the Robin Hood with the red shield Rothschild, and one of the symbols was the fasci, or the, this is a symbol for world fascism. And um, fascist was an authoritarian political movement that developed in Italy, several other European countries in 1919. Its name was derived from the fascis, this thing here, an ancient Roman symbol of authority consisting of a bundle of rods and an ax. That's incidentally why we had axis powers in the Second World War. Here's the uh, bundle of sticks with the axe, and this is on an American, American symbol. This is on the back of the dime, the symbol for fascism on America, the back of the American dime. There it is. I mean, this is a fascist country, and it says fascism is a dirty, evil government that takes over and controls the people. Well, of course it does. That's what's happening to us. We've been taken over and controlled by fascists. And, and, and why? And here it is, the President of the United States standing here giving a State of the Union message and what's on each side of him? The fascists. This is in the Congress. In the Congress, there are symbols of, war, of, symbols of power for the President. He has two large fascists, and very few people have ever even noticed them. They're looking at this guy, and they don't even see these symbols of world fascist power. Okay? And in case you're so blind you can't see, I blew one up and make sure you can see it. That is a fasci a bundle of sticks with a hatchet head and it was used in Rome. Let me explain why it's a bundle of sticks. The idea was in the Roman Empire that Rome could not police the world. What Rome needed to do was to collectivize a police force. That's why George Bush keeps talking about it's not just us in the Middle East, it's not just us in the Middle East, it's a conglomerate, it's a group of us. Uh, we, we merely represent uh, a contingent of a group of nations there, it's not just America. That's the concept of fascism. It's not one stick, it's many sticks joined together with a hatchet head. So one person, one government can't do it, Bush says. What we need is a united nations where we can all unite our sticks together and now we got power. Now everybody crawls on their knees and kiss the boots because they have a collective consensus of fascist rulers. All these guys get together. That's like the East Side Mafia getting together with the West Side and bring in the New York boys and some of the families out in the West Coast and let's put this thing together and really rape these people good. And that's what the symbol of fascism means. They now have an ax tied together with a consensus of power. We have a fascist world government right here in America. Here's the United States Senate, two fascists on the Senate. I mean, even in playing cards, you've got fascists with the king and the jack. That means something. There's a reason why the, act, the ace is the highest card in the deck. That's something else. Aces are always higher than the king for a reason. 
Um, here's another symbol, a geometric symbol used in Freemasonry uh, by these secret societies, the triangle, the pyramid, within the circle again. And incidentally, the pyramid or the triangle is important because it goes back to the old pyramid of Cheops, which incidentally, I don't know if you know this, but the, uh, the uh, big pyramid in, in, in uh, the, called the pyramid of Cheops in Egypt has no peak, it has no point. It has no point on it. it, it the, the chief cornerstone of the point never was there. And the circle represents, of course, the sun. This is the sun, always the circle. And, and it has to do with Stonehenge. Stonehenge is a symbol for the sun in the old ancient uh, Anglo-Saxon Germanic secret society. So that's why Stonehenge and the pyramid are connected. The numerology and Stonehenge and, and, and uh, the pyramid are both the same. There's a lot of interesting stuff there when you get into the numerology of the pyramid and Stonehenge. But here's an example of how symbols are used. All right, here's a dictionary of Freemasonry, and here I'll blow it up. Uh, you'll see the triangle and the circle again, and here's the cross and the crown. And we'll go through that in Holy Bible and the G again for God, which is actually geometry. But this is the triangle and the circle, okay? It's because of the triangle and the circle here. And it has to do with God. It's a symbol of God. It's used in Freemasonry. It's, uh, again, we'll go through. Here's the Bible, Star of David, and up here at the top. Oh, and here it is. But over here on the bottom, it's called the Royal Arch. You may have heard of that in Freemasonry, the Royal, Royal Arch degree. And there it is again. And here you'll see it in, used in churches, the uh, School of Theology at Claremont. Yeah. You'll see it right there. It's used in churches because Claremont School of Theology is a Masonic college. It's, it's financed, organized, and directed by a secret society in Europe. Yeah. And, uh, but people don't realize that. Because it's a holy, it's a church, it has to be holy. And there's nothing holy about it. This is a very powerful secret society is operating throughout the world behind our government and behind governments throughout the world. And they have tied themselves in and set up what they call a religious establishment. And a religious establishment is nothing more than a front man for a very powerful secret society is operating in the world. So uh, they may look holy, but you better do your homework. There's more to religion that meets the eye. Here's the king and queen of England with the triangle and the circle above them. And incidentally, uh, this is a whole different subject of the British royalty. The reason why we call them the royal family comes from Egypt. Osiris, Isis, and Horus were the original trinity in Egypt that was referred to in Egypt as the holy family, the royal family. That's where they get the royal family because of the triangle, the pyra pyramid of Egypt. What God's son Horus rising, and so there's nothing holy about these people at all, okay? And uh, when the king of England, interesting, when the king of England becomes king, the Archbishop of Canterbury, like we have our uh, 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 religious, uh, I don't even know who it is, but, uh, but when the king of England is crowned king, listen to what the Archbishop of Canterbury has the king say in his inaugural, uh, in his inauguration ceremony. Uh, Prince Charles, if he becomes king, incidentally he won't, but if he did become king, would say upon taking the throne, uh, the archbishop says, you are now being crowned king of England for Jesus Christ. You are sitting on the throne of David for Jehovah, the God of the Old Testament. You are, in fact, Messiah waiting for our Shiloh, who is waiting for the Messiah to come back. So you are going to rule God's kingdom until Jesus Christ comes back. That's what the king is told in his initiation rites. The king of England sits on the throne of the God of the Old Testament for Jesus Christ. He represents God's kingdom. And of course, we understand that God's kingdom is going to unite the world in some wonderful paradise condition. And therefore, the, the England is referred to as the united kingdom kingdom. So this is a, you know, it gets very, very interesting when you see where royalty comes from. They actually believe that God put them there. They're a holy family. But the whole thing is based on Egypt, pyramids, triangles. Uh, Give you an, an idea. El Salvador has the triangle and they have the circle and triangle. Incidentally, uh, let me go back here. 
there's a, a little thing, I'll, I'm going to have to get into that on my next one because I don't have any slides to really show you, but there's something called a Phrygian or Phrygian Cap of Liberty. It's a cap that the old French Illuminati Freemasons wore when they overthrew the French monarchy and the French Revolution. You'll read about in school the French Revolution, the, those guys who actually overthrew the French government and the French Revolution, they all wore a little uh, cap. It was like a stocking cap, a red stocking cap. And that was a symbol of something called the Fijian Cap of Liberty. It goes back to the ancient Roman societies in ancient Rome. And um, I, I'm not going to get into it because it's a very interesting subject on this Fijian Cap of Liberty, and you'll see it many times and what it means. But the point I'm making here is that the triangle is within the circle, even in Nicaragua. And uh, wait a minute, I'm missing something here. Nicaragua and El Salvador, right. And this was the two incidents in the two countries we had a lot of trouble with in war down in Central America because of this symbol here. That's what is causing the war, is the symbol in the middle. It's called the Phrygian or the Phrygian Cap of Liberty. Um, just shows you how the triangle and the circle is used. Here's another symbol of Freemasonry. Um, on the Bible, you'll see the cross and the crown. Uh, the cross and the crown, of course, is the cross of Jesus within the crown of salvation or whatever. And, but if you go back to Freemasonry again, you'll see the cross and the crown. The cross and the crown is actually on a chart of Freemasonry, the Scottish and York Rite. We have two rites of Freemasonry in America. Uh, the two most important ones are the Scottish and York Rite. The York Rite comes from England, York, England. And... Uh, when, they, when the York Rite came from England, and again I'm saying that this is like a shotgun effect. I'm just making you aware of some interesting little connections. We can get into all of this later. But the York Rite comes out of York, England, and the Duke of York. Uh, Prince Andrew is the Duke of York. The, the Duke of York, the York Rite Freemasons come to America. When America was founded, the first thing they did when the Colombians came over, uh, the York Rite Freemasons came over. And they set up what they call New York. And New York is the Empire State. That's why we have an Empire State building. New York is the Empire State because it's the new state of the empire, of the new world. It's the new world's Empire State. And the empire strikes back. We get into George Lucas, Steven Spielberg with their empire strikes back and all of that kind of stuff. Because there's symbolism in these uh, the Indiana Jones and all that uh, you know, Star Wars stuff. But anyway, here's a Scottish Rite. They have 33 degrees. That's the reason why you have degrees of Freemasonry. See, the first, second, and third degree. That, at the third degree, that's why, incidentally, when you're, when you're in court or, or the cops pick you up, they give you the third degree. Right? The reason because, Freema because the police department is a Masonic order. They wear the Masonic symbols of power on their arm. Incidentally, that's why they call the armed forces, because they use their arm to beat your brains out. And here's the uh, three layers of uh, Freemasonry, first, second, and third degree. You're, they're giving you the third degree. And then once you become a third degree Mason, you can either go into the Scottish Rite or you can go into the York Rite. The Scottish Rite is referred to as the Egyptian Rite. Everything that they teach and believe is based on Egypt. Or you go into the York Rite and everything they, they teach and believe is based on the old York order, which is supposedly called Christian. Right? So at the, uh, here again, you have the Royal Arch Masons. Royal Arch is very important with the triangle and the circle, and there's the uh, Knights Templar emblem again with the cross and the crown. Uh, the Order of the Red Cross is one of them, and here's the Order of Malta, Malta. When you're giving money to the Red Cross, just remember where it's going. It's going to a Masonic order. And that's why, incidentally, Red Cross can go behind enemy lines during wartime and negotiate for prisoners. Why can they go behind enemy lines and you can't? Because they're part of the war. They are part of the establishment. They operate on both sides. So we got Royal Arch Masons with the triangle representing the pyramid within the sun. We got the Red Cross, the Order of Malta, and that's why Bush went to the island of Malta. They have this uh, summit, and the summit is the top of a mountain, and the pyramid is the old mountain of God. And uh, here's the York Rite with the Order of Knights Templar again. Now here is, I'm just showing you this so that, uh, well, wait. Um, here is the, again, it says the pilgrimage to Virginia of the Knights Templars with the, with the cross and the crown and the Star of David with the Masonic handshake. That's the uh, 
Knights Templar Masonic Order, and here it is on the Watchtower Society of Jehovah's Witnesses. So a lot of people, uh, poor Jehovah's Witnesses, they have no idea in the world that the man that founded their order, Charles Taz Russell, was in fact a York Rite Freemason. He was financed out of London, England by Lord Philippi de Rothschild. His money came from England to found an order called British Israel Freemasonry. He is nothing more than a Freemasonic conspirator to help the masters in England take over our banking system and our government and have everybody, everybody prepared to crawl on their knees and wait for God's kingdom and Jehovah's going to come to save you. Don't bet on it. Cross and the Crown Lutheran Church. That's many places. Kingdom Identity Ministries. We got the Cross and the Crown. Uh, it's found in different churches throughout. Here it is again. All the, you know, these are like, a, um, what am I trying to say? A catalog for religious uh, for religious symbols. And here's a a grinning chess eye cat with his, uh, you know, and he's got the cross and the crown. So when you go to churches and you see this cross and the crown, just know there ain't nothing holy about it. And don't represent nothing holy. It represents a very powerful secret society. Same people who are printing your money are directing the churches. Freemasonic orders. Here's uh, Christian Science, cross and the crown. Mary Baker Eddy's husband was a Freemason in Germany. He was connected to the cross and the crown of the uh, York Rite. You find it everywhere. And I'm just making a point, and the point I make so many things that we see in churches we think are religious. We haven't got the faintest idea where, where, where these churches came from and what they mean. Here it is on church rings, commitment to Christ, and where they have Masonic symbols on the... <coughs> anyway, here's the, right here in Pasadena, uh, the uh, Methodist Hospital right over here. We're walking distance. Methodist Hospital in Southern California. Masonic emblems from Europe with the cross and the crown. And um, they're called, incidentally, those Freemasons, uh, this is interesting, those Freemasons who are operating out of hospitals are referred to as Knights Hospitalers. They are the Knights Hospitalers. They are the ones that have control over the health in America. The American, American Medical Association, the Mal American Health Associations, all hospitals come under the Knights Templars, or what they call the Knights Hospitalers. So when you hear all this crying and complaining on the news by the, by the uh, politicians talking about the uh, absolutely in, uh, in prohibitive uh, cost of medical care, what they're saying is we, we, our brothers in the Knights of Hospital, the Knights Hospitalers, need some more money. So they're jacking up everything. We're being had. We're being had by some very powerful secret societies that control our very life. Everything we see, everything we hear, every, they, our food is dominated by them. They're putting chemicals in our food. They're killing our people. They're beating people up in the street. They don't really care. These are fascists. They don't care a thing about you or anybody else. They have only one thing in mind, and that is the direct control over the human race. It's called the New World Order. Here's a, here's a community Bible church over in Van Nuys, off of Van Nuys Boulevard. Um, incidentally, you'll see pyramids all over it and triangles. And um, here's the um, front. And inside, you can't see it too well. I've got to do a better picture of that. But anyway, it's the cross and the crown. Uh, Santa Anita Apostolic Church, cross and the crown. It's right here on the Santa Anita Boulevard. Um, here's another one. This is over here on uh, Colorado Boulevard in Pasadena. It's a, uh, I think it's a Presbyterian church or a Methodist, I'm not sure. Inside, here it is again. And so when people see all of this, it looks very holy. What you don't understand is that this comes from the Middle Ages. These are symbols out of the Middle Ages of secret societies of Freemasons. These are Freemasonic emblems, the colors. There's a reason for the blue. There are reason for colors. There are reason for the symbols. It hadn't got a thing to do with the Lord. It hadn't got anything to do with anything that's holy. These symbols come out of the Middle Ages, out of Germany and France and, and Spain and, uh, and England. And as they move into our country and taking over our land and, and subverting us into slaves, they give us all of these symbols and emblems with their Masonic Order of Knights Templars. And they think they have pulled it off. But like Lincoln said, you can fool some of the people some of the time. And 
most of the people all the time, but you can't fool everybody all the time. They haven't fooled me. I've been on this for 35 years. I got associated with this through my mother's uncle when I was a little kid. He worked at the Vatican Secretary of State's office as a civilian. And every three or four years, he'd come home and talk about all of this stuff. So I grew up listening to this. And um, here is a sovereign grand commander's flag for world Freemasonry. Okay? And on the supreme flag, which is, of course, a, uh, uh, accepted all over the world, incidentally, if you go into a court today, uh, when you go into a court, if you see an American flag in any court, state or federal court, if it has a gold fringe around the flag, do you know what that means? There's a very good reason for why certain flags have a gold fringe and other courts the flag does not have a gold fringe. According to international maritime admiralty law, when a government is at war, it must fly its flag with a gold fringe to show sovereignty in a point of war, in a time of war. It's called martial law. In a time of war, flags have gold trim, which means before we were, we were this country and we were happy. We're at war. You see that gold? That means sovereignty. We are at war. Gold fringe means martial law. So when you go into a, a, a courtroom to pay your fines or a ticket or anything and you see the American flag with gold fringe, that means this is a military court. This is martial law. And they have the right to beat your brains out with a, with a stick if they want to. This is not a civil court. It is martial law court under military control. And uh, the judges know that. And uh, most people don't understand that. But anyway, on this world symbol for Freemasonry flag, you'll see the, uh, the snake biting its tail. That has to do with something occult. But the words, ordo ob tail. You'll see it, ordo ob tail. You'll see it in Masonic literature, the double-headed eagle. Incidentally, I'll, you probably have seen the double-headed eagle many times. The double-headed eagle in Freemasonry means the Masonic order is symbolized by the eagle. Incidentally, we have an eagle as our symbol in, in America. But the double-headed eagle means that it is a Masonic order that has jurisdiction, like the eagle of America has jurisdiction over us, the double-headed eagle implies, according to Masonic literature and all their reference work, implies that the Masonic order has jurisdiction over the, West, the Eastern world and over the Western world, over the East and West. So in Russia and China and all those bad, evil people over there, as opposed to Western Europe and America and England and the West, it's still the same game. Ordo ob tail, in Latin, order out of chaos. So what we're talking about here is these people are causing, financing, organizing, and directing chaos. And for what purpose? To bring about a new order. To keep you frightened, keep you scared, keep you broke, and keep you on your toes. And while they're keeping this chaos going, they are instituting a new order, and you didn't even know it. They're, in other words, what, it was bad enough as it was. Now it's really going to get bad. So, order of KO again. You see it everywhere. Incidentally, you'll always, when you see uh, Masonic orders, you drive by and you see the, uh, in front of Masonic lodges, you'll always see the double-headed eagle perched on a sword, always on a sword. Because they said real power comes from the sword. And that's the way you create chaos, is with the sword, with violence. Um, and out of that violence, order of tail, order out of chaos. That's why they had television shows, uh, comedy shows, a few years ago on television. Uh, one was Get Smart. While they tell you, you know, anytime somebody's telling you Get Smart means that you're implying you're an idiot. Get Smart, wake up. Get Smart, what were the two sides in Get Smart? One was uh, uh, chaos, and the other was control. Right? Get Smart, wake up. This is what's going on here. It's a scam. So when you see that everything, all this rioting and all this killing and the gangs killing, that's all being planned. This government is planning governments. This government is planning gang warfare. They want the gangs to kill each other. That's part of the strategy. It's incredible. Ordo of tail.
Anyway, order from chaos to control. Here's a, a California Senate, California uh, legislature, 1953 Senate Investigating Committee and published by the state of California, okay? And uh, it says, so-called modern communism is apparently the same hypocritical and deadly world conspiracy to destroy civilization that was founded by the secret order of the Illuminati in Bavaria, 1776, May 1st. The World, Revolu World Revolution conspiracy appears to have been so well organized and to be ever continuing and ever on the alert to take advantage of every opportunity presenting itself or that the conspirators could create. Um, it is significant in this connection that as early as 1783 when unsettled conditions and dissatisfaction in some quarters had arisen in the American colonies. Subversive anonymous sermons were circulated among the colonial army to incite dissatisfaction and rebel rebellion. George Washi Washington immediately called the army together and in addressing them, he used this significant language. We're talking about 1783, George Washington said this, quote, my God, what can this writer have in view by recommending such measures? Can he be a friend to the army? Can he be a friend to this country? Rather, is he not an insidious foe some emissary perhaps from New York. So George Washington already realized that there are conspirators who are planning our demise and they're operating out of New York. Then the Senate goes on to say, it is plain that Washington believed the then center of this secret conspiracy, so far as this country was concerned, to be located in New York and felt it to be his duty to make such a direct statement. So what we're talking about here is as far back as 1783, we've known what was going on. Uh, inc incident, well, I better go on to the next quote because it'll, it'll make sense. The recognition of May 1st, 1776 as the founding date, which is on the bottom of the um, pyramid on the dollar bill, 1776, had nothing to do with founding this country in 1776. It has to do with the founding of the Illuminati in 1776. The recognition of May 1st, May Day. That's why in military, when a plane's going down or there's trouble, they call it, it's a May Day call. It's May Day. May Day means trouble. That's right, because these people are trouble. They cause chaos, violence, re re revolutions throughout the world, bloodshed in Afghanistan, in uh, Yugoslavia. Anytime these people decide they want you, that's trouble. It's May Day, and that's the symbol for them was May 1st. That's when their conspiracy was, was formed in 1776. Now, the recognition of May 1st, 1776 as the founding date of this world revolution conspiracy is not difficult to understand when it is realized that May Day is frequently celebrated even in recent times by rioting and bloodshed on a worldwide scale. That's why the Soviet Union always had their May Day parades because the Soviet Union was always going out and killing people and murdering people, and they would celebrate on May 1st, because what they were saying on May Day was that they're celebrating the world conspiracy. They're celebrating the world Masonic conspiracy that is financing the Soviet Union. And incidentally, and as it says, it's often uh, celebrated, even in recent times, by rioting. That's when we had our last riot in Los Angeles, was on May 1st, May Day. I mean, the thing that happened in Los Angeles was set up. The CIA and the federal government set up what we call the riot in Los Angeles. They set up those four guys to, the, the, the whole thing was a setup. Dick Gregory even got into this for a three-hour talk on KPFK where this whole thing of Rodney King beating was a setup. It was all planned. It was purposely planned. It was purposely designed because they knew the people would be angry and would riot. It was a setup. The whole thing that's why in wartime, we call in this country in wartime, generals talk about the theater of war, the Pacific theater, the Atlantic theater, the, the European theater. The theater implies it's an act, it's a, it's a plan. It's just a theater, it's entertainment. You know, that's all it is, it's a theater of war. In other words, when you see all this violence and raping and killing going on in Czechoslovakia or Romania or wherever the hell it's going on, or in, uh, in Yugoslavia, it's all been planned. Now, what do you think the Pentagon is all about? They're sitting there planning how they're going to take over different countries, what they need from certain countries. They're breaking the, the monetary systems of the world. This is all being well planned. There ain't nothing, like Roosevelt said, there ain't nothing happening by chance in politics. 
Anyway, in issuing this manifesto, the communist conspirators evidently believed the time had arrived when, with the aid of ignorant victims, a worldwide takeover could be accomplished, and there was not enough, but there were not enough ignorant victims then, and the expected coup failed. The conspirators thereupon conceived the plan for the future of supplementing the long-established secret conspiracy in existence since May 1, 1776, with an unremittent public campaign for victims among the ignorant of all nations, and in an attempt to hide from view the underlying hypocritical conspiracies existing since May 1, 1776, it was decided that in such public campaign the manifestation the manifesto of 1848 should be heralded as the founding date from, for communism and Karl Marx falsely proclaimed as, a, as its author. What this is saying is that we are taught in school that communism is directly caused by Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels writing the Communist Manifesto. In 1848, Communist uh, Manifesto was, was written by Karl Marx. No such a thing. Uh, history tells you that it was written, the, the Communist Manifesto was written in 1776 in Europe by an order of Freemasonry called the Illuminati. And it wasn't until 1848 that they decided, well, we better not, we better tell everybody that somebody else did it. So we'll say Karl Marx came up with it in, in 1848. No way. What we call communism is nothing more than a plan of banking elements in, in England and America to divide the world between two divisions to divide the world between the East and the West so that you can have war. You've got to have war, chaos, before you can bring control. That's why the United States financed Adolf Hitler, the United States financed the Soviet Union. Soviet Union is called the Soviet Union, not because it's a union of states, it's because it was a unionized under International Labor Organization, the ILO, which was originally called the IWW, the International Workers of the World, which because they wanted to unionize all labor. Painters Union, you know, the, uh, the uh, Carpenters Union, the Soviet Union, it's unionizing labor. And once you can unionize labor, get control over monetary and labor systems, now you can, you can have them war with the control of them. These people are very, very smart. They've got this stuff together. And, um, Here's George Washington's, the writings of George Washington from the uh, U.S. government printing office, from original manuscripts. Here George Washington says, I have heard much of the nefarious and dangerous plan and doctrines of the Illuminati. Um, it was not my intention to doubt that the doctrines of the Illuminati and the principles of Jacobinism had not spread in the United States, see, on the Masons and the Illuminati. In the United States, on the contrary, no one is more truly satisfied of this fact than I am. So he's saying, I, you don't have to tell me about the Illuminati and what they're doing in New York, I already know. Here is interesting, though, on the Masons and the Illuminati, writing said, um, individual Freemasons of them, in other words, he's saying in this letter to the man who wrote it, I don't believe all Freemasons in the whole world are evil. I don't think all Freemasons in the whole world are bad. But I know what you're talking about when you say that there is a secret conspiracy operating out of New York and in America and throughout the world. Nobody is more truly convinced of that than I am. Of course, there's a lot of ignorant people in Freemasonry that don't know any of this. But that individuals of them may have done it. I'm going to paraphrase this because it's an old English. Washington is saying, the idea I meant to convey was that I did not believe that the lodges of Freemasons in this country had, as societies, endeavored to propagate the diabolical tenets of the first, the Illuminati, or the uh, principles, the pernicious principles of the latter, the Jacobins, if they are susceptible to separation, but that there are individuals in the Freemasonic order who may have done this, or that the founder or instruments employed to found the democratic societies of the United States, later to become known as the Democratic Party. The founder or the instruments employed to found the Democratic Party in the United States may have had these objects in mind and actually had the separation of the people from their government in view is too evident to be questioned. What he's saying is that the Democratic Party was founded by a secret society of Freemasons that have one thing and that they wanted to do, and that is divide the people from their government. 
because before, under a Republican form of government, the people had total control because they were sovereigns. Under a democratic system, when you elect a Democrat, they were already had the idea of separating the people from their government. You just elect some airhead here and send him to Washington. But what you don't know is that this person is not even allowed to run for office unless he is one of them. He's not even allowed to run for Senate or for the state or for any, any position without being a part of this thing. So if you want to run for office, you just go out and try and see how well you can run for office without being a part of the Illuminati or the Freemasonic order of things. If you don't belong to the right club, Jack, you ain't going nowhere, period. Here's a congressional report from the, the congressional hearings on steps toward British Union, again, Union, steps toward British Union, a world state and in international strife. I'll run that back by you again. British Union, a world state, what are you talking about, world state? You're talking about a one world order, a world state, an international war. And on page 13, this is a very interesting document, 28 pages long. But on page 13, it says, let me call your attention to the fact that on the reverse of the great seal of, of the U.S., which appears on dollar bills, you will find the exact symbol of the British Israel World Federation movement. The symbol is also carried on literature of other organizations promoting a world government and a world religion. At the bottom of the circle surrounding the pyramid, you'll find the words Novus Ordo Seclorum. This was the new order that was advocated by Clinton Roosevelt several hundred years ago. So this is a symbol of a thing called the British Israel World Federation. It is a connection between England and America and the Masonic orders of both and how they put this thing together. That's why, I guess, again, we say that England um, is God's kingdom, the United Kingdom. And uh, as a matter of fact, there's a very big difference. A lot of people don't know this. There's a very big difference, difference between being an English and British. British comes from a Hebrew word, Brit. In Hebrew means a contract or a covenant. And ish in Hebrew means man. Therefore, British means the covenant man, man of the covenant. What covenant? It's the new covenant, God's covenant, covenant for a kingdom through Christianity, through God's kingdom, the united kingdom, the British. And the British, with America, are involved in something called British Israel Freemasonry. And all these dopes in Washington, D.C., and these conspirators in Washington, D.C., the District of Columbia, are nothing more than front men for a very powerful secret society is pre preparing us to accept something that's called God's kingdom. Remember, Armageddon's coming, the end of the last days, the end of the world, Jehovah's Witnesses, the Mormon Church, the end of the world, you better do your homework. There's something going on here. That's why we have a 51st state. Incidentally, a legal term in this country for a state is called the state of, like the state of Alabama, the state of New York, the state of Florida. State of is a legal term according to International Maritime Admiralty Law. That's why we have a state of Israel. Israel's not a country, it's not a nation, it's called the state of of Israel because it was set up as part of our federal system. It was set up in 1948 by the United States and England and it was referred to under international maritime admiralty law as the state of Israel because it is it is an actual state of the federal system of America. So you better you know you better figure out why too. There's a reason for it. Here is a symbol from taken from a Freemasonic uh, book they didn't know I had. And uh, here's the fires of revolution and trouble, anarchy, the cauldron of fire, they call it in Freemasonry, of the revolutionary trouble. And here's the pyramid with the Masonic. And down here you have three contingents or three factions of Freemasonry always at war with each other. You have the Pope, which is a Freemasonic, incidentally, the Catholic Church is a Jewish Freemasonic movement founded in the Middle Ages in the year 325 by Constantine. It is a Jewish, Freemasonic, political movement. That's why the, the, the Pope wears the little yarmulke. He wears the little yarmulke with the, with the uh, cardinals. They wear the telus. All of these symbols and emblems in the Catholic Church are nothing but Jewish Freemasonry. Huh? Kabbalistic. 
Yeah, Kabbalistic Freemasonry. Uh, you'll see, I'll, I'll give you a lot of examples of that very quickly. This is, so this represents Rome, or the Roman Freemasonic orders, and incidentally, you'll see a lot of this stuff in Godfather Three. In the movie Godfather Three, there's a lot of this stuff talking about the secret societies and the Freemasons operating in the Vatican and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, oh, incidentally, the guy who, uh, who uh, directed those shows and put them on the uh, Godfather series, uh, Francis Ford Coppola, uh, I was doing some research at the police department down at Parker Center, and in their files, they have a whole file on, uh, on um, Francis Ford Coppola. Francis Ford Coppola's father was Carmine Coppola, who was a don in the mafia in the city of Corleone, Italy. Huh? Corleone? That was his father. He was in, uh, his father was a don in the mafia in Corleone, Italy. That's how you can make such a great movie and know so much about it. Hell, his father is the, the don in Corleone. Yeah? So, uh, anyway, uh, incidentally, I think uh, Francis Ford Coppola is great, but I mean, he's very knowledgeable. He's put stuff together. You better figure out where he's getting all that money to make... Uh, uh, you know, Apocalypse Now and all the, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. Where is he getting the money from? I mean, where do these people get the money from? They're getting it from secret societies and fraternal orders that are the powers behind our government, okay? So here we got the Vatican, we got the Knights of Malta, and the King of England. And they're all in there working up the fires of trouble all over the world. Here's the Pope with the yarmulke. Why, I ask you, are all of the politicians and all these world leaders all on their knees to the Pope? It's not because they're Catholic. I mean, here's the Emperor of Japan, Japanese, and he's on his knees, or getting ready to. So how come these people are all on their knees to the Pope? It has nothing to do with the fact that he's Catholic. It has to do with the fact of who he represents. He represents a very powerful secret society referred to as the Knights of Malta. And in, and in world Freemasonry, it, there, is an un, there is something we call today uh, an unwritten code of ethics among the thieves. I mean, you may be the, the East Coast family and the West Coast family, but when you meet, there's a certain respect for each other. So the, the Eastern nations, they respect that he re represents a very powerful secret society of the West. And so it's only honorable to show respect. It doesn't mean we can't have a war. It doesn't mean we can't kill each other. But this is a state affair, so we all on our knees. And these symbols here, the stripes going over the, over the uh, shoulders, all are Masonic emblems. They always represent who you are in the Masonic structure of things in world Freemasonry. Is that why they killed the 30-day Pope? That's it, exactly. That's why they killed John Kennedy, too, because the Pope, they were afraid. Freemasonry in this country was very much afraid that John Kennedy was going, that well, the old Joe Kennedy was going to start a, a Catholic dynasty in America. And that's one thing they're not going to have in America is a Catholic dynasty. You can't help it once in a while a Catholic will get elected or something, but we ain't have no dynasty here. I mean, every time you turn around, Joe Kennedy had, what, 15 kids? My God, he was going to have kids galore. And he wanted to have all his sons be president, and, uh, congressman, senators, always going to be a, uh, a Kennedy doing something every time you turn around. So somebody decided to take Kennedy out. It's interesting that Kennedy... All the stuff around Kennedy's assassination is just filled with secret societies, fraternal orders. All you need to do is see JFK and you know there's something going on here. Anyway, here you got uh, the Knights of Malta on Nazi soldiers um, with Adolf Hitler. That's because Adolf Hitler was connected with the Vatican. The Vatican signed concordance with the Adolf Hitler. And uh, that's why Mussolini and Adolf Hitler and the Pope they were the enemies of Jewish Freemasonry in America. That's why if they're going to kill a few Jews in Europe, who the hell cares? I mean, it's, that's business, you know. That's why Hitler was killing Jews. It's because the Vatican was an opposing branch of Freemasonry, which was a Gentile Roman branch of Freemasonry, which is why Rome, Mussolini of Italy, joined together with Adolf Hitler because they were trying to reestablish what is called an Aryan system of, of, uh, of laws and science in the world as opposed to the new world order in America. So when you see all these things happening on a world scale, they're not just happening. There's reasons for all of this stuff. You know, here's uh, Nazi officials. They look like some of the people who run this country. 
They're just like it, too. And uh, they look about, yeah, don't they? Don't they look like governors and uh, senators and whatever? And so here's an emblem right here. Uh, this is the Knights of Malta. They all wear the Knights of Malta symbol, Masonic Order of Malta, Roman Freemasonry. But then down here is the, this is the Military Order of Malta. Incidentally, when you see the, uh, the round circle with the swastika, the swastika was the old Aryan uh, Hindu symbol for the sun, like the Egyptians had Horus, but the ancient Aryans of India had the, the, uh, the swastika for the sun. Incidentally, the swastika for the sun for the Aryans and the Buddhists, the, 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 the broken legs went the opposite way. Hitler inverted them and went the opposite way. Um, the, the Aryans had it going clockwise, which meant something spiritually uh, in, in the esoteric. Hitler broke the legs and let it go backwards, which meant it's going back to the east instead of going to the west. So he was reestablishing the old Aryan empire on the ancient eastern occultism. Uh, all of this has to do with secret societies and subversive movements. But anyway, this, this Knights of Malta... A uh, religious emblem here on this one is interesting because when you enlarge it, I think I need to, uh, you know, that's pretty good. You'll see that it is the same one as the other one we showed on the, uh, before, Knights of Malta, but you'll see it's two circles. There's an outside circle and an inside circle, all right? Here it is again, outside circle and inside circle, okay? Knights of Malta. Religious Knights of Malta cross. And there it is again. But where is this at? It's in, it's in Pasadena. First Congregational Church in Pasadena. Right? It's on churches right here in Pasadena. The Knights of Malta, religious Knights of Malta symbol. So, oh, and something else you might be interested to know. On... Uh, all churches, you'll find a uh, pointed arches, pointed arches on the doors. You go in the church with a pointed arch, and the windows are pointed arches. The pointed arches symbolize the female. The pointed arch of the female. And, um, and that's why the male, that's why they would never allow priests, uh, women to be priests in a church, because the philosophy which gave birth to what we call Roman Catholic or Western Christian civilization was based on the female arch and the man wears the priest wears the robe or the you know the robe which is the female dress a robe is a female dress and a priest wears a robe because because spirituality in the ancient world according to the ancient world spirituality was always in the hands of females not the males men were never uh, thought to be holders of religion or, or, or spiritual creatures. They were the ones that went out and killed and raped and murdered and brought in the food. The women were the ones that nurtured the child, brought civilization to males, you know, because if you take all males, you lose civilization. You need the female to civilize society. Yes. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. The compass of the male. It has to do with the, and that's why I said that the priest represents what the long robe, he's representing female wisdom, or something the Greeks call, the Greeks called it Pista Sophia, female wisdom. And within the female wisdom, beneath is the male. So it's, it all has to do with symbology, it all has to do with sex, the female, pointed arch, etc. Um, all right, then we get up here to uh, York Rite Freemasonry again, and here is the Masonic Square or the, uh, the Masonic, uh, what is it, the uh, Malta, Knights of Malta Cross. See the cross, that's the same one the Queen was wearing. Right? The Knights of Malta Cross, here it is again. Uh, let me go back to that. Order of Knights Templars. That's why in, in, uh, in Israel today, you see the Jews going to the Wailing Wall and you see this in the news there at the Wailing Wall. And it's like, it's the wall in which they wail. They wail because of the, the Wailing Wall was put there, 
I, I, it's, a, it's a very difficult uh, story to say in a couple of uh, words, but that's where we get Wall Street from the Wailing Wall, the Hebrews who wail on the Wailing Wall of Wall Street. Uh, it has to do with symbolism, which goes back to Solomon's Temple. Solomon's Temple was the symbol and the home of what is called the Knights Templars, Knights of the Temple. That's why uh, Steven Spielberg has the, the Jedi Knights and the, uh, the Empire Strikes Back and the Jedi Knights. Incidentally, according to, if you go to the library and look up the uh, Masonic folklore, you will see that the, the spiritual connection between uh, the Freemasons of the York Rite and God was a little spiritual creature they called Yoda with little pointed ears and he was a magician. They called him Yoda. Uh, Yoda comes from Yoda or Judah. It has to do with Judah, Yoda, the Knights of Malta, and whatever. You know, we, you, you can make a whole study out of any of this. You can make a three-hour lecture out of every single thing I'm saying. You could spend hours on it, but I'm just throwing all of this stuff in uh, just to show you that there are connections that can be made. Anyway, the Knights of Malta with their Maltese cross. Uh, here is another Knights, of Malta, uh, another Knights of Malta, 33rd degree Freemason with the Knights of Malta, okay? Here's the same one on Masters of the Universe, right? That's what they intend to be, as Masters of the Universe. I mean, hell, they own the Earth. Now they're going for the Universe, right? Now they want to go out to other stars, moon, own the, own the whole Universe, Masters of the Universe. Blonde hair, Aryan. Remember Hitler with the blonde hair, Aryan, Knights of Malta, Catholic Church, kill the Jews. Hey, it's all connected. <coughs> right? Okay. <coughs> you get the uh, the uh, Knights of Malta again, and I'm drawing your attention to this strange configuration here because you'll see it again in the fire department. L.A. Fire Department has the Knights of Malta because the fire department, the police department, sheriff's department, mayor's department, and everybody else's department is all Masonic, the whole thing. We are in the hands of a very powerful secret society, and we call it law. Actually, it's nothing more than secret societies who have totally taken us over. And we just go along to get along because we're too ignorant and too frightened to death to do anything we didn't know. Yes? You have a red background. The Knights of Malta are a Gentile Roman Freemasonic order coming out of the old Roman Empire, which was the collective power of the old world of Europe, because Europe was dominated by Rome. And so the Knights of Malta is a symbol for a Masonic order coming out of the old world order of Europe and it was called the Knights of Malta, and because it goes back to an old priesthood on the island of Malta. Malta was a symbol many, many, many years ago, over 2,000 years ago in the Roman Empire. Um, let me think of something that's comparable. Um, you know, there are certain places in our country that, that, are, that are hot spots for occultism. And in the Roman Empire, Malta, the island of Malta, was a place where you go there, and those people are really off the wall of, out there. They got strange stuff going on there, occults and all that kind of stuff. So Malta was always a symbol for occultism in the ancient world. And so the Romans had what they called the Knights of Malta, the Knights who operate. Yes? Did, did the Illuminati, that the no, no. The Illuminati, the Ill Illuminati, all right. The Illuminati is a relatively new phenomena in Freemasonry. It came in in 1776 with Adam Weishaupt. But what, what the Illuminati was was a merely a, a course correction in Freemasonry. There was the Roman world under the Roman uh, domination of Europe, Freemasonic order. There was the coming out of Spain, France, the coming of what is called York Rite or Scottish Rite Freemasonry, England, Spain, France, coming into America to found a new world order, but above, but above them, but above the two orders, which is the, uh, the, the, uh, the eagle with the double head, implying that both sides, 
both the old world order and the new world order are being dominated by a third one. And that's what Ian Fleming in his James Bond novels was talking about, that there's a third power over the two. It's and it's both. controlling both. And that's the Illuminati. No, this is just showing uh, 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 the, the Knights of Malta symbol, which is Roman Freemasonry. But it shows how they don't mind using both sides as long as you remember that America is a, uh, a York Scottish Rite country. They don't, you know, they're, they're symbols of Freemasonry. And what I have to do is I have to show you their works, their reference works that explain these symbols and how they connect because they're very open with it. They explain their symbols and how they got here and what they mean and why they allow them to be used. Yes. No, they're all working together for the same goal. The same goal is to create chaos, to, to have Adolf Hitler fight the United States, have Russia fight America, have China fight. All of this stuff is being or orchestrated from a higher Masonic order. Well, that's the thing that there's been a lot of conjecture on. There's been a lot of books written about that. Ian Fleming wrote his James Bond novels. He called it Spectre. Remember, the, somebody, the secret, petting the cat, and he's putting the West against the East all the time. And Ian Fleming, when he was uh, in interviewed on David Frost's show, uh, they asked him, who is this specter, this, this third power group that's always getting the East and the West at war? And he said, England and America and, and the Western world are aware that there is a third power in the world that pits the two together. And that is operating, he said, out of Switzerland. That's what I think is why Switzerland is a neutral country, because that's where the big boys live. And you don't mess with, yes, the World Bank. As a matter of fact, in Switzerland, uh, there's a large building in one of the cities of Switzerland, and I had a big color picture of it. I don't have it on, on slides now. There's a large building in, in a big downtown city in Switzerland, and it's a round, perfectly round building, enormous in size, look like maybe two or three blocks round circle and it's divided into equal uh, equal three into an equal uh, triangle and one third is the uh, it says in the article one third of the building and then when you fly over it you can see it it's like the peace symbol that's why the peace symbol was the y within the circle okay it was called in runic in the old german runic it was called the peace symbol anyway the uh, one third of that building in switzerland is the world headquarters for the united nations one third of the, and the other third is the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, and the other third is the World Headquarters for Freemasons, the Masonic World Congress. So you got the Masonic World Congress, World Government, United Nations, and the World Bank. This way they keep it all together. You don't have to go out for coffee. You can all work together, right there together, right? Yeah, it's incredible. Here again, I show you the, uh, the Pope with the uh, Jewish Yarmulke. There's a reason why the Pope wears a yarmulke. That's a Jewish headdress. That has nothing to do with uh, God. It has to do with Jewish Freemasonry. The reason why he is called a cardinal, the word cardinal means a hinge on a door. That's what, it word, or that's what the word means in Latin, a hinge. And the Pope, the word Pope comes from Papa, which is Latin, which means the door to the mysteries. He is the one that you must go through to open up the mystery of God. So therefore, he's the door and he's the hinge. The cardinals are the hinge for the door. And it goes all the way back to Babylon. It goes back to the old ancient Babylonian and mystic, mystical religions. Here's, a, here's a, a document I got from a Freemasonic a friend of mine who got me this document. It's a color. It was on the wall, and I asked him if he had a color reproduction of it. He did. He gave it to me. And it shows some of the different... Uh, what is called uh, the different divisions of Freemasonry throughout Europe and what they, what they mean and how these guys are all connected together, you know, from England to France to Italy to Spain. It's all being connected. It's all being orchestrated. And uh, Yes? I'm not even sure what those words are. That one? I sat and talked to uh, the, the librarian, the chief librarian, his name was Cook. He was the one that had a copy of this, and he was just explaining how these were the different uh, concordant orders of Freemasonry. 
in, in uh, some of the different symbols that are used throughout Europe. I thought it was interesting when I first saw it because that looks like the Pope's tiara, uh, the Pope's diadem, right? And that looks like the Pope's diadem, and I called it to his attention, and he said, yes, it is. That's the papal headdress with the, uh, you know, so what we're talking about here is... Pre huh? Yeah. Yeah, I understand. I'm saying I don't read the language. That's what I'm saying. Do you read it? No, I don't either. I forgot what the guy was saying. He was, you know, it was an old man. He was telling me all this stuff, and he was writing it all down for me. And I, and I was... J-E-U. -E probably. It probably has something to do with it, you know. Yeah. Well, whatever. Yeah, whatever. And he's part of the group. He's part of the plan. <laughs> of course. Because it's the state of the new York Empire. Right. The Empire Strikes Back. George Lucas. Oh, yeah. The more we change, the more we stay the same. Nothing new. Here it is again, the Vatican with the Masonic symbols. I'll run through this pretty quick. I, I don't want you to get too bored. But anyway, here's a papal headdress. But these are all um, accoutrements for Judaism, right? The Ark of the Covenant and the Mercy Seat. And here's the uh, Jewish high priest. And he's wearing the same one you just saw, which was a uh, wore by the Pope, the Pope's headdress. But we're talking Jewish here. We're not talking Roman Catholic. Unless, of course, you understand Roman Catholic is Jewish. Here is Freemasonry, and, uh, and a, uh, off of a page, it's called Chapter Jewels of Freemasonry, uh, symbols of the different departments of Freemasonry. And up here, you'll see the king, the scribe, and the high priest. And for the high priest, what do you have is the pope's headdress. The pope is a high priest of Freemasonry. And the King of England, he's, he's in there too. But that's why there's a war, there was a war between the King of England. King Henry VIII uh, had a falling out with the, uh, with the Pope. And the King Henry said to the Pope, uh, we don't, I don't like the way you're doing things here because you're hanging out too much with, uh, with the wrong kind of people. And so we, our Knights of the Order of York, are not happy with you. And so we're going to break it off. We don't want you ruling England anymore. So from here on out, we're going to be king of the kingdom. The keys are, the keys are going to be, those keys on the bottom of the papacy, on, on, the, on the Masonic, well, let me go back and show it to you. Come on, one more time. Uh, where are the keys? I thought, the, oh, anyway, I thought the keys were, okay. Anyway, on the papacy, uh, you might see it here yet, there's always those two large keys under the, under the Pope's symbol. Um, I think that's where we get the uh, Florida Keys from, because if you understand what the word keys and what it means, Florida Keys, I think, is connected to it. Because so those people down there in the Florida Keys, better know who those people are. The Florida Keys are a home for some of the most powerful mobsters the world has ever known. They got a whole thing down there, and you don't, if you understood how many millions and millions of dollars, I mean, countless millions of dollars went into just building that highway from the coast of Florida all the way out to the Keys. That is an astronomical uh, feat for the military, and the military was in charge of doing that. The CBs laid it all out, and the military laid, it, laid out that, and if you've ever gone down there, that, that highway is a beautiful highway going way out as far out as the eye can see. Right. Now, how much did that cost? And how come you put it out there? For who? So, yeah. Uh-huh. They didn't put it out there for me. I don't live there. 175-mile bridge out in the middle of nowhere. And I don't mean no little, a little platoon thing. I mean a beautiful bridge going all the way out to those islands. And there are hundreds of islands out there. Why? Because those families that live out there were friends like B.B. Rebozo, the friends of, uh, of uh, Nixon, always see the presidents going down to the Florida Keys. 
That's because these guys who are the powers behind us live out there in the Keys on those islands by themselves, like in the Sean Connery, James Bond movies. These guys are absolutely horrendous. They got, a, they got a thing going that will not stop. And we have no idea in the world what's going on. That's why they call it the Florida Keys. Um, again, I say within the triangle of Freemasonry, you have the Pope's hat. Here is the uh, breastplate of righteousness for the Jewish high priest, the high priest of Judaism with the Masonic apron, the fleur de lis, which is a symbol of France which is a symbol of sex, joining the male and female, and he's wearing the Pope's headdress, okay? Um, here's a, uh, another Masonic apron, and on the apron you will see King of England, the Pope. Incidentally, that's why when you go to college, you get out of high school, you wear it. When you graduate from high school and college, you wear a black robe, same black robe that a priest wears. It's the same black robe that a judge wears. And the square, the square you wear on your head, when graduating is called a martyr board. It's a square Freemasonry. So if you go to church and you do things right and you stay in line, you're, you're a square. Hmm? Yeah. And uh, here is what we call the, uh, the Royal Arch Freemasonry, which we saw before, Royal Arch. And that stone right in the middle that holds the two sides of a Royal Arch together is called a key stone. That's why Pennsylvania is called a key stone state because Pennsylvania is where the Constitution was signed, where these guys put this thing, whole thing together. That was the Keystone State, where the Keystone was finally dropped between the six and the six, and the one in the middle makes 13, the 13 colonies, the Keystone State. Again, it says, for the Royal Arch Chapter, note the headdress of the principles. We're talking about the Royal Arch Chapter, right? And note the headdress, again, the Pope, the King of England, now, we have something here, uh, these symbols up here, this is, a, this is what is called, and I, again, I can't remember if it's a 60 or a 90, but I'll do it again. This is a, I think, the 60 degree square of Freemasonry with the G for geometry in the middle. The 60, do, and incidentally, the reason why it's like this is because of the triangle pointing down and the triangle pointing up. You know, if you cross them, then it becomes a star of David. That's why it's there that way. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's it. And that's according to the Masonic, you know, the Masonic books, they say. It's, it's actually a, a, a takeoff on the Masonic Star of David. Triangle up and triangle down, but the six, the, this is the 60 degree square. All right? On them, anytime you see like the, uh, like the uh, Olympic stars or any of these other, they, they always have the ribbon, right? Anytime you get an award from the government, it's on a ribbon. That's called a 90 degree square. That's a square, but it's at the 90 degree, a 90 degree square, okay? You have to keep that in mind, because that's a Masonic square, okay? Here it is, the 60 degree and the 90 degree. Okay, I'll back it up, I was wrong. That's the 90 degree, and this is the 60 degree. 90 degree square, 60 degree square. Well, it has to do with, see here's the square of the 90 degree, and here's the square progress of the 60 degree, okay? The 60 and the 90 degrees. And what are we talking about here? We're talking about Freemasonry. Okay? Here it is again. It's the same as the square of Freemasonry. Here you see it, the 90 degree and the 60 degree on in churches. Yeah. So when you see these uh, choirs, uh, the thing is in churches, they're wearing the square of Freemasonry on them. And it's only appropriate because they're worshiping the Masonic God. Uh, here is St. Louis at Jerusalem. According to, uh, I don't know if this maybe is, maybe uh, uh, you can't see this too well, but it says St. Louis at Jerusalem. According to Masonic history, the man who first captured Jerusalem for the uh, Knights Templars was St. Louis. So they honor St. Louis. Um, with the Royal Arch in St. Louis, the Royal Arch. Yeah, in St. Louis, the Royal Arch degree of Freemasonry. I mean, these guys are good. They do all this stuff and crap in front of you, and you have no idea. What, yeah. No, no idea in the world. It's all connected. There's nothing happening by chance. 
And there's no problem with economics in this country. There's no problem with lawlessness in this country. There's no problem with anything. This is the strongest, most powerful nation in the face of the earth. So if there's any problems, it's because they are causing the problems to keep you agitated and frightened and scared and, and in control. Ordo ob teo. Here's something called the Summit of the Arch. This is from uh, a, a State Department bulletin. And here it's, I don't know if you can see that, the reading. Uh, it's the meeting of, the, um, of all of the top criminal families in the world. Uh, you know, the Germans, the American, Margaret Thatcher. These are all the heads of state in the Western, in the Western world. And uh, it's the giant glass pyramid. Of course, they would have their picture taken in front of the pyramid in France. And that's why always in any great wars and all the time of world trouble, you always have to have a Paris Peace Conference, you know, in Vietnam and Korea. You always go to Paris because Paris is the home of the French Grand Orient Temple Masons, right? And so here you got the Summit of the Arch. Why would they call this the Summit of the Arch for the Western world's financial and the, the leaders of the Western world? Here's a little Masonic library to show you how it's connected with religion. They've got masonry. Uh, Mormonism and Freemasonry from the Masonic Lodge Publishing. So Mormons are founded by, organized by, directed by, and financed by the Freemasons. Joseph Smith and Brigham Young, the two leaders of the Mormon Church, were both 32nd degree Freemasons in the Scottish Rite. Here's another book, The Relationship of Mormonism and Freemasonry. Here's Mormonism and Masonry. Freemasonry and the Book of Mormon. Here's a, that's why in, uh, in Utah we have Zion, Zion National Park. Zion National Park with the great white throne. Incidentally, the, it's not black throne, it's a white throne. And that's why America is ruled from the white house, not a brown house, or a yellow house, it's a white house. Okay, and that's because England is ruled from what is called White Hall. White Hall is the central power of England, White Hall. I'm telling you, the people who are running this country are the most powerful criminals the world's ever known. Here's, oh, wait a minute, should we take a break? Okay, let me back it up there. Huh? Oh, okay. <laughs> That way we'll make it work out all right on the, on the tape, okay? So, um, let, all right, let, let's get past this one thing and then we'll, then we'll take a break. Masonic Orders of Fraternity. This is taken from a Masonic uh, uh, document. The direct descent of the essential program of the esoteric schools was entrusted to groups already well conditioned for the work. The guilds, trade unions, similar protective and benevolent societies have been internally strengthened by the introduction of a new learning. The advancement of the plan required an enlargement of the boundaries of the philosophical overstate. A world fraternity was needed, sustained by a deep and broad program of education according to the method. There's a method to this education that we're getting. Such a fraternity could not immediately include all men, but could unite the activities of certain kinds of men, regardless of their racial or religious beliefs or the nations in which they dwelt. Here's the point. These were the men of towardness, those sons of tomorrow whose symbol was the blazing sun rising over the mountains of the east. Remember uh, Shell Oil? Okay. What it's talking about is that the conspiracy already had knowledge that the guilds, the trade unions, similar protective and benevolent societies were perfect grounds for control. So you set up the Red Cross, you set up the Painters Union, you set up these unions and benevolent societies and this and that, set them all up to ostensibly, uh, of course, protect the people, to help the people, and protection, when in fact they're being organized and directed to control the people. And it does in such a fraternity could not immediately we can't we can't explain this conspiracy to everybody. We can't count in everybody on this. 
but we could unite certain kinds of men, as long as we all understand what's going on here, we could unite these different organizations together. And the symbol for these men, these were the men of Towardness, whose sons of tomorrow, these sons of tomorrow, whose symbol was a blazing sun rising over the mountains of the east. That's important. These were the men of toward this, whose the sons of tomorrow, whose symbol was the blazing sun rising over the mountains of the east. While it is difficult to trace the elements of a pattern never intended to be obvious, a, the broad shape of a design is dimly apparent, the invisible empire. So it's saying it's, it's, it's very difficult to put all of this together. But the reason why it's difficult is never, it was never intended to be obvious anyway. I mean, if you're on the inside, you know there's a design, but on the outside, it's not supposed to be obvious. Okay. Here's uh, where they're getting this from. This is from the old Assyrian Babylonian mythology, the sunrise. The god Shemesh appears above the mountains of the east. Here's God's sun rising over the mountains of the east. That goes all the way back to Babylon. Here it is in Hebrew theology, the sun rising, Israelites at Mount Sinai. The sun rising over the east. Shell, the sun. The sun rising on Hebrew, Jewish Freemasonry. Here it is, the Kabbalah. We're talking about the Kabbalah. And here on the back on chapter 9 is called the way of one who is caught between the suns of a dying and a dawning day. The one caught between, between the one who, no, wait a minute. The way of the one who is caught between the suns, implying that there's two suns. There's a sun going down and a new sun coming up. The old sun of the old world order, Rome, is going down. Vatican, Europe, is the old sun, and it's going down, and there's a new sun coming up on America. There's a dawn of a new day for America. It's going to be the king of the world now. A thousand points of light. Points of light. All right, so what we're talking about here is between the suns of a dying and dawning day. George Washington said, here's his chair where he signed the, all of his documents, George Washington. And up here, he says, but now at length I have the happiness to know it is a rising and not a setting sun. I now at length have the happiness to know that it is a rising and not a setting sun. So Washington understood. This is a priceless relic of the Constitutional Convention, the rising sun chair of George Washington? Huh? Yeah, with the Fijian cap, yeah. As a matter of fact, yeah, let me go back on that. The Fijian cap, that's the old cap of the, of the Fijians. Huh? And the reason why, I mean, I could get into this too, I'm not going to right now, but there's a reason why we'll get into that another time. That's very interesting too, the Fijian cap. Um, here's a book by James Billington, Fire in the Minds of Men. It traces the course of the revolutionary faith from its earliest origins in occult Freemasonry to the allegedly scientific Marxism of today. So when you hear things about scientific Marxism, communism, the Soviet Union, and all of that, what we're talking about, scientific Marxism, is actually had its earliest origins in occult Freemasonry. And James Billington has written some brilliant books. He is a Rhodes Scholar, like the new president. He's a Rhodes Scholar also. Studied at, he teaches at Oxford. He's probably taught our new president. Uh, he, is, he is a really establishment boy. This guy is well thought of by all the gangsters and top of the governments of the world. He's their boy. And he is a very, very brilliant man. He's put out some very thick books on the Illuminati, and Masonic, this whole book is dealing with the Masonic symbols and emblems that are used throughout the world and what they mean, and what well, a tremendous book. <clears throat> but I was showing you this only because the, uh, in relation to Marxism, connecting it with the origins in Freemasonry, okay? Um, again, here is a, um, a page from an encyclopedia on, on Russia, and over here you have the flag and this national coat of arms. The National Coat of Arms talks about the rising sun is a symbol of the dawning of the new day of communism. New day is in quotes, okay? 
the rising sun is a symbol of the dawning of the new day of communism, all right? This symbol came out for the Soviet Union 1930s, late 30s, mid to late 30s. It, was, it, was, it, was, it, it originally came out at that time. Uh, in New York, we have the dawn of a new day, dawning of a new day of communism. And in New York, we have for the World's Fair of 1939, the dawn of a new day. There's connections between the New York World's Fair and the coming of the Soviet Union. Somebody's trying to tell us something in New York. Uh, sun rising in Russia, Soviet Union, sunrise. Here's the, uh, what is it, half a dollar? Yeah, 50 cents. And uh, here it says, she is moving toward the dawn of a new day, the sun rising for us. They put communism over there, it's rising for us now. Now we're coming into a communist system. <coughs> we call it democratic, like the People's Democratic Public Republic of China, the People's Democratic Republic of Cuba, the People's Democratic Republic of Romania. And now we got the People's Democratic Republic of America. And nothing in all, in all uh, Marxist communism is, is the same as the old Roman fascism. It's all totalitarian dictatorship, period. Here's Charles Tess Russell, founder of Jehovah's Witnesses. He's telling everybody the new day is dawning, you know, preparing all the poor Jehovah's Witnesses for the dawn of a new day. Here is the Watchtower Bible Tract Society of Pennsylvania, Jehovah's Witnesses with the sun rising over the mountains of the east. Here's a Christian, uh, uh, a Christian distributor for Christian uh, materials called the New Day, sun rising over the mountains of the east. Christians have no idea in the world. All this stuff is being manip manipulated and presented to them, and they have no idea in the world. And they're out there for girl to accept God's kingdom, Channel 40, and never realize the symbols of Channel 40 are Masonic. And all of their leaders are all Freemasons. It's, a, it's, it's too bad, but it goes, to, it goes back to, you know, pride precedes a fall. When it is you think you have the whole truth and you're in tight with the Lord, that's when you've been had. Uh, Richard Nixon struck a coin for himself and called it the new day for America, the new dawn for peace. That's what he did. <coughs> Uh, here's uh, Liberia, <coughs> the uh, flag with the symbol for the rising sun on the flag, just to show you how it's used throughout the world. The sun which heralds a new day. Romania, their symbol is the sun, like the shell, the sun rising over the mountains of the east. Uh, the rising sun expresses the promise of a new day. Uh, here's Mongolia. Uh, the Horseman on horseback with the sun rising over the mountains stands for the nation's advance toward communism. Uh, Malawi with the red sun. Malawi added the sun to symbolize the dawning of a new day for Africa, and it was. They killed a lot of people over there. And um, Afghanistan, there was a new dawn for Afghanistan. They broke that up and killed a lot of people. And uh, here is on, on, on rings, uh, high school rings, College rings, a new dawning sun coming up. Here's the sun coming up on college rings and high school rings. There it is. Behold, a new dawn, the sun coming up on the mountains of the east. I mean, hey, they control education, religion, politics, the police department, fire department, and Sears. I mean, let's face it. They own and control the world you live in. It's the only game in town. You know, behold, a new dawn. Kids wear these rings have no idea in the world what that means. Uh, and how much more time do we have on the, on the film? Good. The, a recurrent early romantics in young Karl Marx and the Russians of Lenin's time was Prometheus, who stole fire from the gods for the use of mankind. I'll read it again. A recurrent mythic model for revolutionaries a model for revolutionaries, and early romantics, young Karl Marx, and the Russians of Lenin's time was Prometheus, 
who stole fire from the gods for the use of mankind, Prometheus. Here in New York at Rockefeller Center, we have the Prometheus Fountain, the Masonic Square Freemasonry, and in front of Rockefeller Center is Prometheus on the Promethean Fountain, who stole fire from God. And that's why during the Olympics, you have the uh, they're running around with the torch, that's the torch of Prometheus, like the Statue of Liberty holds the torch of Prometheus. It's a symbol for the Age of Enlightenment or the Illuminati, the Illuminated Ones, holders of the light. Well, wait a minute. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to, this is the end of it right here. Uh, the United Nations, I was saying today, uh, to one of you today that the, uh, uh, the post office, uh, I mean, the, the, our postal service used to have on our post boxes on the street were red, white, and blue. Today they're just simply blue. They're just simply blue. Because blue is a symbol for Israel. It's the, it's the symbol, it's the national color of Israel, which is incidentally the same national color for, I mean, the international color for the United Nations. This color blue. This particular shade of blue has since become known as UN blue. This is UN blue. It comes from the old Grand Lodge of Freemasonry, the Grand Lodge blue. That's why they call blue degrees Freemasonry. The blue the first three degrees of Freemasonry is called the blue degrees. That's why the United Nations is blue. Yeah, that's why when you go to college, you get a degree. Because that's the way you move in Freemasonry is by degrees. The 33rd degree, the 32nd degree, the 3rd degree. You go to college and get a degree because these people will teach you what you're supposed to know, not what you're not supposed to know. You're not supposed to think like this. They teach you what you're supposed to know. They teach you how to earn a living, not how to live. They teach you how to think, not to think, but how to think. And so um, that's why uh, when you come out of college, they call you an alumni because you're an alumni. You are illuminated. You've been enlightened by the powers that be. As long as you stay square and play on the square, you're going to do all right. As long as you don't go thinking too much is the end of the first section.